Summer Undergraduate Research Experience 2015, Investigating the Band Alignment of Gallium Nitride and Molybdenum Disulfide Semiconductors. So why am I doing this? Well, gallium nitride is a direct band gap semiconductor, which means it's good for optoelectronics and stuff. It also has a relatively high band gap which means it can be used to produce blue or UV light with other materials, like other group 3 nitrides. For a long time, there were no blue LEDs, so there were no white LEDs, so there was no high-quality light available from solid-state devices. So there was no way to use the more energy-efficient solid-state lighting to do anything. Then these people made blue LEDs of gallium nitride, and that was really cool and people found a lot of ways to use gallium nitride and they gave them a Nobel Prize because it was really cool. Molybdenum disulfite is also cool. Molybdenum disulfide has been used as a lubricant for a long time, but recently people have also had some interesting ideas about how it can be used as a semiconductor. Molybdenum disulfide is a 2D material, so it has covalently bonded flat layers, kind of like graphene, that will then weakly bond to each other to form the bulk material. So it turns out as a layered structure, like in the picture that you are currently looking at. Anyways, there's a lot of interesting things about molybdenum disulfide as a 2D material. There's a lot of interesting types of ideas people have for building devices with it and how to use its layered structure because you, you can tweak its band structure in a lot of different ways including based on the number of layers. Monolayer MOS2 is a direct band gap material, whereas multi-layer MOS2 has an indirect band gap. So there's a lot of interest in, in molybdenum disulfide and its properties and possibilities, optoelectronic possibilities, spintronic possibilities. I can't explain spintronics. So the question is, when gallium nitride and molybdenum disulfide are next to each other. How do their band gaps align? Understanding this is useful because in electronic devices, the band alignment of two parts of the device is very important to how it will function. Modeling the band alignment could help look at what kinds of devices you could make with these two materials. The first part of modeling the band alignment is to reproduce the band structures of bulk gallium nitride and molybdenum disulfide. Then you can look at the potential in the bulk materials as compared to vacuum. Then you can look at the potentials in the materials next to each other and compare their band alignments. Materials have electrons in them. They have a lot of, a lot of electrons. Anyways, they always have more than one electron in them, and that makes it difficult to calculate the electronic properties. Fortunately, density functional theory states that everything you need to calculate the ground state properties of the material can be written as a functional of the electron density. So if you're doing DFT calculations, you can use a software like BASP to take your initial inputs and a initial electron density and then converge that through the cone sham equations and get to a converged solution and then you have the ground state electronic properties. This is a picture of the paper describing the basis of the cone sham equations. They figured out how to do this in the 60s. It's pretty cool. I just realized I made a collage out of a paper. That's not cool. At least I'm not an art student. You probably noticed that already. So I can use DFT to relax the structures to a minimized energy and can then do another calculation to find the relative energies at sampled points and calculate the band gap in structure. There's many different factors to consider when doing DFT calculations. I'd like to thank Professor Kiyopakis for giving me the opportunity to work on this project in his lab this summer. Him and Guangsha, my graduate student mentor, for giving me so much help and guidance. And everyone in the Kiyopakis group for being great people to work with. 
I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to work on such an exciting project this summer. I'd like to thank the SURE program and the University of Michigan for giving me the opportunity to do research this summer. I'd also like to thank NERSC, whose computers I've been using all summer to do research on.